I love this question. And I am so proud of the way I answered it the first time I ever did it. I'm going to answer it the exact same way. But this to me is exactly where, you know, again, people always ask me, I'm running out of time on the hard questions. What do I do? How do I go through the hard questions faster? How do you go through this faster? If this is slowing you down, that's the problem. This is an easy one. So let me show you why, okay? As I, as I look at the choices, I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble already. These are crazy looking, but I'm thinking about plug points and new equations, my main math strategy, because technically they're inequalities, but they're equations, and, and having some number in that X might be the right way to go. So that's already on my mind even before I've read a single word of this question, but let's continue. In a set of four consecutive odd integers, where the integers are ordered from least to greatest, the first integer is represented by X. The product of 12 and the fourth odd integer is most, at most 26, less than the sum of the first and third odd integers, which inequality represents the situation. So I kind of stopped paying attention to what I was reading because I realized the problem is this X is just a random number, basically. And I don't want to have to think about random numbers. I want to think about real numbers. I want to, I want to be able to follow the instructions that they're giving me with real numbers, not with hypotheticals. So not only am I going to plug points into equations here, but they didn't give me any points. So I know that this is actually the arithmetized version of plug points into equations where I make up some numbers. So a set of four consecutive odd integers, I'm not that clever. How about X is one and then the others are three, five, and seven, right? right? The, the first integer is represented by X. So the first is one and then consecutively three, five, and seven. Those are odd integers. They're the simplest ones. Let's think about it. Now I can follow these instructions much more easily. The product of 12 and the fourth odd integer. So seven times 12, that's 70 and 14. So that's 84, okay, is at most 26 less than, oh my gosh, the sum of the first and third. So I can at least do this part, the sum of the first and third, that's the sum of one and five, which is six. Okay, so I got two numbers here. So the product of 12 and the fourth, that's taken care of, is at most, so if I'm starting to rearrange things, 84 is at most, meaning it's it's less than or equal to the, uh, where were we? Uh, da, 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 is at most 26 less than the sum of the first and thirds. So that means it's less 26 less than six. Now, if I do six minus 26 and finish the job here, right? I, I get something that doesn't make sense. I get 84 is less than negative 20 and it's not. So I picked numbers that do not make sense in this, but it doesn't bother me so much because look at the answer choices. They're not asking me to solve for X here. They're asking me to just kind of like understand how this thing is built. And so I can see that there's some there are basic like quick choices, right? So should I have 12 times X plus six or 12 times X plus four? Well, what did we do? We did 12 times seven. And what is that? That seven is X plus six, right? So I probably don't want C and D. I want A or B. I want to do X plus six, which is in this case, one plus six is seven. And I want to multiply that by 12 because that's what the instruction told me to do. So, okay, at least I understand how this thing is starting off a little bit better. Now, uh, where do I go from there? Well, I could just kind of look at the inequality too. Is Do I want it less than or equal to or greater than or equal to? Well, it says at most. So that, that part I got right, right? That's less than or equal to. So shouldn't it just be A? And I can check the part that comes after to make sure. What are we doing there? We're doing X plus X plus four. Well, my X was one. X plus four would be five. And I'm adding those together. That's exactly what I did. X, you know, was one and five meant six, right? So that that's the same thing. And then I subtracted 26. So there it is. It's less than 20, uh, as most 26 less than that. So everything checks out. Now, again, the numbers don't make sense, but I'm not trying to make sense of the numbers. I'm trying to make sense of the equation. And the equation makes perfect sense because I was able to arithmetize and follow instructions in a much more intuitive way than if I had carried that X through this whole process. And some of you will be like, yeah, but I can do it with the X and, you know, bully for you. I, I don't really care. I certainly don't feel comfortable doing that because look at how similar all these other wrong answers are. If if you think about it slightly wrong, odds are good you're going to get one of the wrong answers and you'll never know. Whereas I kind of know I'm right. I don't I would not really even mark this for review because I'm just like, well, it it worked out. Maybe I'd mark it just for the sake of like 
if I happen to have time, I'd love to come back and just be like, what's the deal with the actual number? Like why, you know, why doesn't my number work? What, what would work? You know, maybe can, I could get some numbers for X that would actually justify it. Uh, and I can do that just by typing my answer in. This here on my Desmos is the correct answer, which is A, and the equation. You can see, look at how it's shading these things, right? It's starting at X being negative 9.4, and then anything to the left of that would be a valid answer. And since we need integers, um, I think then it means that negative uh, 11 is actually the first integer that would work because negative nine is to the right of that line. So that's not even in the shaded region. Negative 10 is an integer, but it is a positive, uh, it is a negative um, uh, even integer, but we want odd integers. So negative 11, I think would be the first one that works. I don't really care enough to, to double check and prove it, but that, that shows me that there are some numbers that fit this thing. So good enough. But that wasn't what it was testing. It, it's not about finding that integer. It's about understanding how equations are built. And understanding them is so much easier when we actually just have numbers to put into them, even, even when they were the wrong numbers. And this is so great because one of the biggest hurdles people have with the arithmetic strategy is they're like, I don't know what numbers to use. I don't know if it'll work. I, I didn't know what numbers to use. I picked the wrong numbers. And it still got me the right answer because it helped me understand the mechanics of the question. That's the purpose of this strategy is to visualize what's happening. Yeah, maybe sometimes the numbers don't work out the way that we want. We can adjust if needed, but no need to here. It's got to be A. And I understand how this equation is built so much better because I was able to just do the instructions in, a, in the same way that a seven-year-old would, not as some complicated algebra thing. Love this question. Such a great question. You got to get right very quickly compared to some of the ones that are going to come. But this is the kind of thing that will slow most people down.